All right, it's been a few weeks and I've done a bunch of work on this. I'll just kind of recap where we are. This is the um, four millimeter long rod Odyssey engine. And what I did is we went ahead and media blasted the cases, cleaned those out, put brand new main bearings in it, brand new seals, and of course we've got the YZ connecting rod in it. And everything, I'm pretty happy with that. Because we went to a long rod on it, we had to fabricate a spacer plate. Uh, this is a 3 16 aluminum that we made in here and it just happens to work out perfect with a couple of gaskets. We've got a stock gasket here and uh, we had to get some get some gasket material from Felpro. They don't make it in 20 thousandths. I, I put some calipers on this. This is 28 thousandths uh, and believe it or not 8 thousandths means a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 8 thousandths off of this plate and it's not going to know any difference that it's got a thicker gasket. I went ahead and uh, bored the cylinder so I could get a piston in it and we did some some port timing on it. I'll explain that but uh, the first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to rechamber this head. The specs on this worked out just terrible. I mean the, the exhaust duration was so low it didn't make any sense to me at all. So to get some power out of this we decided we we're going to run uh, look for about an 8500 uh, RPM to where this thing really hits and over rev to 92, 93. So what I came up with for uh, port durations on the cylinder is we're going to run 184 degrees on the exhaust and the transfers were running uh, 126. So there was a lot of grinding that happened on this cylinder. One thing about these older cylinders, the charge back in the day, they used to like to send it up to the top. So we did some, some um, uh, substantial cutting in the transfers to get this charge to lay flat, try to lay more flat across the top of the piston without losing a whole bunch of velocity. So I spent, probably spent a good 16 hours on that cylinder. Now uh, the other thing is the uh, exhaust port, the width of it, it was being run at 59%. We went ahead and we opened that up to 70. We did all of our, um, all of our port time areas and they seem like they're working out pretty good. Other than that, uh, one major thing we did is we cut the top of the cylinder. When, when I brought this up to top dead center, I had 120 thousandths, 129 thousandths approximately um, of deck left. So in other words, the piston was lower than the top of the cylinder. So we went ahead and we milled that right off the top of the cylinder. So now I have zero deck and I'm going to rely on, and I'm not going to be able to get any closer than this, I'm going to rely on my head gasket for my squish that head gasket works out to be one and a half millimeters. When we did uh, all the calculations on the design of the head, I'm going to come up with um, 27.4 meters per second maximum squish velocity. And to attain that, I'm going to cut this lip completely flat. I'm going to change this angle. And again, this head right now is 24 cc's. I'm going to change this angle to 11 degrees. I'm going to carry it 11 millimeters in and then do whatever blending I have to do to make sure that this comes back out CC that 24. So I think we got all the pieces of the puzzle here and um, I'll show you what we're going to do to the head next. All right, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove the indent in the top of this head and cut as much off as, as I have to to be able to clean this angle up. This is much steeper than 11 degrees. It's actually two angles, but I have to be able to get my 11 degrees going in this way. So first thing I'm going to do is cut this chamber out. It's pretty basic on a lathe. Just dial a cut and uh, take it off. Looks like we're getting most of it here. I'm taking a few more cuts. Get it out of the lathe. The next place it'll go is to the uh, granite plate. I'll go ahead and lap this thing. Get a nice surface on it. Turns out I cut about 60,000 off of the face of this. And this is where my head is going to start, so I think i got enough room here. I'm going to try and cut this 11 degree angle and make sure it's going to be wide enough.
I had to backtrack here a little bit. Uh, 60 was not enough to get the 11 millimeters that I was looking for going in this way. Uh, realistically, the number is more like 75,000. Uh, the width of the band is 72 and a half millimeters. So what I did is I changed my compound at this point. I'm going to run a 20 degree blend angle. I'm just going to go in and make contact with my tool bit and then uh, shove the compound in and that'll take my blend angle. Then I'm going to reseat it, see where I'm at, and start taking material out of the bowl to get back to my original 24 cc. watching me run, run a lathe and CC and come back and you know it's like watching paint dry but moral of the story is I'm right where I want to be this was actually I rounded it at 24 it's it was actually 23 and three quarters cc so I'm right on the money there I'm a little bit small but this has a uh, auxiliary spark plug in it we're not going to use this and that that spark plug sticking out in here is taking up room so by backing it off and doing that test I got exactly where I want to be the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get in this chamber. We still have a little bit of our 20 degree blend here, not a whole lot of it, and I'm really not concerned with it, but I am going to radius this. So we're going to get in here with some uh, 220 wet dry with a little bit of water on it and just start to get this a lot smoother than it is. It's pretty simple, just a little bit of water, 220 wet dry. Watch your fingers, be careful doing this stuff. product we're back at the uh, CC point we want to be uh, I'm going to lap it next I'll get rid of this shiny line here and um, I think we're going to be good on this only thing additional I am going to shim this spark plug in the back I'm going to put a spacer in it uh, it's starting to get kind of close to the piston you know, theoretically we remove quite a bit of material so I'm just going to shim that and you know check it we'll see how it goes all right, we're going to leave the uh, the bottom end just natural. It was sandblasted, and I just put some uh, high heat engine clear coat on it. So, if you've seen a bunch of my videos, this is going to get really boring. But I am going to film, you know, the assembly, putting this thing together. So, first thing I'm going to do, I use these little bottles. I love these things um, to hold oil. It keeps everything so it doesn't get contaminated. I'm just going to shoot a little bit of oil on the bearings. Not that we didn't oil it when we put it together, but a little bit of quality two-stroke oil and just roll this connecting rod a little bit. Next step, I'm going to put the uh, piston on. All right, I went ahead and cleaned the piston. I used that piston for, the, for a lot of the layup on this, so I went ahead and cleaned it again. Uh, cleaned my pin, cleaned my top end bearing, and I'm just going to do the same thing. Get some oil on these things. One thing I like to do before I, before I assemble this is always put one clip in and make sure when you put these clips in that the opening is facing either straight up or straight down. All right, we got the piston on. It's a good idea before you put the second clip in to just put some kind of dunnage. I'm just using a rag here. Uh, so if you drop this clip, it doesn't fall in there and cause you all kinds of problems. Again, when you put the uh, C-clip in, make sure that it, the opening is either facing up or down. You don't want it side to side. And the arrow on the top of the piston is facing the exhaust port. The next step is to check the ring end gap. And that's pretty easy. You just take your bore diameter 
whatever that happens to be, and it's the same on any two-stroke. Well, I could be wrong. I'm not going to say any because there's always exceptions to the rule, but I've never seen it. You just multiply your bore diameter times 0 .004. Always round up if you get a fractional number. For this application, I'm using 12 thousandths. So I just use a feeler gauge to check it. Slide your rings into the top. Make sure they're square. Slide that gauge in. Make sure it goes between the, uh, the ends of the ring. Went ahead and installed the rings. When you put the rings on, this is a Weisco kit. Uh, Weisco marks the top of these rings. It has an end mark on it. That end has to face up towards the top of the piston. The other thing is make sure that these grooves, that the pin is in between them. All right, we're getting ready to put the cylinder on. I just want to point one thing out. One thing we did have to do, because this plate is uh, much thicker, you have to make new dowel pins and basically just pull your old ones out and whatever your plate thickness is, make your, make your dowel pins uh, you know, that much longer. So I've got my factory gasket on, I'm going to throw my spacer plate on, I'm going to throw my homemade gasket on and then uh, get the cylinder, get the cylinder oiled up and on top of the bottom end. Alright, obviously went ahead put the cylinder on and everything lined up nice. I put some new pins in the top of it. These are uh, Actually, I use these pins on almost everything. They fit almost every make and model of bike I've ever put my hands on. You know, Japanese manufacturers, these are a lot of the same vendors, but uh, here's a look at the cylinder. Board, home, the new porting, new piston, and next thing we're going to do is put the Okay, we got a cylinder on. I ran into a little bit of a stumbling block putting the head on. What we found is because we machined 120 thousandths to get our squish off the top of this cylinder, and then an additional 75 thousandths off the head. What's happening is when these, these are the nuts we're going to call them, it's kind of like a bolt nut, but when these go down all the way, there's not enough room. We're running out of threads. So what I did is I just made a mandrel and got some uh, grade 8 washers, half inch inside diameter, and I went ahead and I turned these down. And that's going to give me my proper spacing, so we're going to go ahead and put the head on next. 